What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. My name is Alex, and today we're going to be doing a spoiler-free review of a Netflix movie that just came out called A Classic Horror Story. Yeah, Netflix has horror now. So it seems like Netflix had heard of the gripes online about there not being enough horror, and maybe they're trying to compete a little bit here with Shudder, as Shudder has really dominated the horror space as of late. Obviously, you know, Netflix has always kind of leaned towards sci-fi. It always has. It just has. They have had quite a few different horror movies in their you know, resume and a lot of movies that they brought to the streaming platform itself. But now we're starting to see a little bit more horror themed stuff come to Netflix. And this one I really enjoyed. First off, a classic horror story is an Italian film. This means that you can watch the English dubs of this movie. But personally, I think it sounded terrible and i think there is enough english in the movie because there are english speaking people that you could watch the movie still read a little bit and and benefit from the actual experience of the movie with subtitles if you're not sure how to do that all you got to do is pause the movie go to italian with english subtitles and you're done trust me it's a better movie this way now a classic horror story has been written and directed by quite a few people they have two directors and like five writers on the film which makes sense we have writer-director Roberto DeFeo. Not that DeFeo. I love you, Jody. This is the DeFeo that put out a film in 2019 called The Nest, a.k.a. Il Nido. Not the one that just came out here a few weeks ago. Completely different movie. That was his first feature film. And we have writer-director Paolo Strapoli, who also helps to direct this film. We also have three other writers that help write this story, and that is Lucio Bassana, Milo Tassone, and David Bellini, who all work together to make this crazy genre bending film so what is a classic horror story sounds like such a weird kind of throwaway title doesn't it so a classic horror story is about a group of strangers who are taking a sort of ride share to a destination in another like city in Italy. This one RV with this guy and suddenly something happens in the middle of the road where they have to steer off and they become stranded in the forest. And that's pretty much all you really should know going into this film. Other than the fact that you need to watch it with Italian language and English subtitles, it is much more of a film than you may perceive received by one the trailer and two the beginning of the movie i saw the trailer and it had the dubs on it you know and it kind of made it seem like this like candy bubblegum sort of 90s sort of early 2000s you know americana style horror and i believe that was also done intentionally as well i personally really enjoyed this film i like genre bending films that are not what they appear to be on the surface there is a lot of different types of subgenre horror in this in this film and it is a twisty one not just a single twist you know this isn't just an m night Shyamalan sort of thing this has multiple different twists throughout the film that should keep you interested in the beginning of the film i felt like oh god this is borrowing from so much different stuff but then it twists and does things a a little bit differently there is a sort of trope that you see in a lot of horror movies where people get stranded they get in a car accident and then you don't know if they're alive or they're dead or you know that trope is pretty heavy and i think what they did with that is actually pretty genius it's kind of along the lines of the marketing that you would get for like cabin in the woods obviously this isn't a comedy movie or an entertainment movie it could be watched by a big fan of horror as well as somebody who may not be aware of a lot of horror horror films as well although I think it kind of leans towards the horror fans because there is some dialogue in the film that sort of points you in a direction about the Italian cinema and how it used to be in the 80s and how it was booming and why it went away they talk about different things throughout the movie that kind of are very horror centric as well as being gruesome bloody and kind of fucked up never goes too far for gore hounds it's not going to be the most disgusting this isn't hostile but but it has hostile-like situations in the film. A lot of mystery that's going to make you wonder 
what the fuck is actually happening and you'll think that you know but you won't know and that's kind of the beauty of this film is that it takes you through all these different types of emotions of familiarity and some people are going to hate it for that reason i guarantee you there's going to be people i've already seen in imdb they're like don't waste your time and i just am blown away by that is this you know lucio fulci style no this is way more heady much more a modern take it seems like robert defeo and paolo strapoli and all the people who helped write on this really kind of had a really good grasp of what they wanted to do with this film and i think it sticks out as a really good film in fact i would probably put this on my list for this year so far where it fits into that list so far nobody knows how many will be in that list I don't know. As it stands now, I really enjoyed the suspense in this film. I liked a lot of the different directions that this movie pulled me in. It definitely set up expectations and smashed them. It also set up tropes and smashed them as well. I like that it fucked with my head a little bit to make me think that it was something less than it actually was. Something else I really liked about this film was the way it's shot. It's shot really well. And they do have some like sort of tight up close shots that are a little heavy sometimes, but I think it kind of is effective in how they do this movie. It kind of harkens back to other movies you might have seen that, you know, this movie's trying to push in your face a little bit. This movie kind of packs a punch when it comes to the third act. It does some things that I was cheering, literally cheering, because I love to see this in a film. There's like multiple things that they do. And I'm like, yes, I screamed when I watched this movie. That's how much I enjoyed this part. It automatically elevated the movie, just that alone. And by the end, it does sort of make a message about society. And if not society as a whole maybe just italy but i think it is more societal and uh what we do on a regular basis and why people watch horror movies and why they don't like them that they throw all into this one movie and for that reason there's going to be a lot of people that don't like this i really feel that way strongly i would give this movie an eight maybe an 8.5 but to be honest with you i really feel like i need to give this movie another watch because there is so much that i could talk about that would be a, an entire spoiler video on this whole thing it's just one of those movies that it's either for you or it's not and, and neither party's wrong but i think if you watch it again you'll see the many different layers that are in this movie that they actually took time i mean there is five writers that could be considered a bad thing but i think that's because they wanted all these different genres and all these different tones in the film to make one big film whatever netflix is doing if they can pick more movies like this they might actually have some competition with shutter because i feel like this would definitely fit in the shutter you know resume for original films or films that they distribute, etc. What did you guys think, though? Did you watch this yet on Netflix? It just came out today or late last night, as I recall, but it's up for viewing on Netflix. It should be within all of your countries because it is a Netflix original, so check it out. I definitely encourage people to go check it out, whether you hate it or love it. I, I'm not a big fan of Fear Street, but I like this. This this actually feels like a, more, a bigger package, and that's why I feel like this could be easily an 8.5 even. Pretty excited about this one though and i think you should check it out have you seen it what did you think about it if you enjoyed this review please hit the like and subscribe button i do have a lot to say about this movie that i can't tell you guys and that's a good thing personally i feel like that's that's something that a good movie does is it makes you want to talk about things that you can't but anyway thank you guys so much for coming by and spending your time with me every week and as always long live the boy Beyond the Void. Join us. Join us. Join us. Beyond.